we are back. I think it's all working well now. Good, good, good. So, welcome back for this first session. We will be talking with Jennifer Weinman today. Uh, you'll hear from uh, Jennifer. She is the head of a people's operation at TopTal. It's one of the fastest growing company right now, operating 100% remotely. Um, TopTal is actually an exclusive network of the top freelance software developers and designers in the world. And um, one of the questions people ask a lot to big companies working remotely is how are you, how were you able to scale? And also how are you able to keep the culture alive in such growth? So uh, Jennifer was gonna talk to us about how to do that and how to build the best onboarding process to make sure your team stays strong. So I'd like to go ahead and I'm gonna unveil Jennifer and show her screen. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, everybody. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide myself, and I'm going to add your screen as well so Perfect. you can share your slides. And again, I would just like to uh, remind people, if you have any question while Jennifer is speaking, please ask them in the Q&A section below. And you can also vote for a question that you like. And at the end of the talk, we will have 10 minutes to answer any questions. So mic to you, Jennifer. Have a good time. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I'm excited to kick off this inaugural conference that Human Maids put on. I'm going to move kind of fast. There's a lot of information I'd love to cover, and in 30 mm -hmm. minutes, I want to get the heavy hitting items. So just to make sure I've got my screen pulled up here and everyone should see my slides. Uh, Daphne, let me know if there's any visual issues there. Um, but I want to talk about boot camp onboarding with impact at TopTal. And before I do that, I think it's helpful to set the stage of who is TopTal. Daphne mentioned that we are a pretty large company that's 100% remote, and that is absolutely correct. So let me just move forward here on to our first slide. This is from our career site, and you can access this on your own. But fully remote for us means truly 100% remote. We are we have a core team that is in the hundreds. And then we also have our network of talent who work with clients, and that's in the thousands. And so for today's conversation, I'm going to focus on the core team, um, our internal group of employees that are spread across the globe. For us, I think a lot of companies, when they say they're remote, um, the size can vary, and some may have a partially remote workforce, or maybe there's still a corporate headquarters. For us, we truly do not have a single building anywhere in the world. It's, you know, wherever your Wi-Fi is, that's where you work. And we really try and embrace that and encourage people to have not only a work-life balance, but that ability to travel. We have lots of people that live that nomadic lifestyle, you know, every month, every few weeks, they are in a different location with that you know we drive accountability for our employees to make sure they have connectivity and can do their job but they find that great balance and so that allows us as a remote company to find the top talent in the world it doesn't matter where someone lives they're not bound by any geographic confines and for us that's an amazing opportunity to bring awesome talent into the organization so that's sort of the mentality behind that completely remote lifestyle We've had it since day one, and I'm sure many of you here, it looks like from the poll, majority of you are in some sort of remote capacity, and I want to talk about how you can scale. As companies get bigger and bigger, they might think there's a challenge in continuing to be remote, and I think we found really successful methods to make that feasible and scalable all while being remote. So an overview of what I want to cover today, um, talking about my observations coming into TopTal, as well as the iterations we've gone through to build out our onboarding program, which we call Bootcamp. I want to talk about the breakouts, how we handle onboarding for different segments and audiences joining our organization. And then beyond the typical onboarding approach, what are we doing in days 30, 60, 90, et cetera, to keep that engagement strong throughout that newcomer time frame when someone joins the organization. And then finally, just talking about structure-wise, how we make it all happen, I'm going to talk about a lot of activities and programs we've built out, and obviously over time as you scale, you need a great team to make that all happen, and so org structure is often an interesting topic on how do you divide up those responsibilities and make it feasible to achieve all the great benefits of onboarding. 
Before I dive in, I think one great point, um, there's a lot of data and insight out there on how impactful onboarding is to retention of employees and to engagement, which we know leads to productivity and ROI for the business. And so prior to joining TopTal, I had worked remote in other organizations and I had had the experiences of starting remote and not knowing when I was going to hear from my supervisor on day one, not really knowing when my first day officially started, uh, not having a computer for a few days, company equipment not making its way to me on time. And for any of you that have similar sentiments or have experienced that, we know that it can lead to some frustration. Um, people can question, you know, is my role valuable? Did they even know? I was arriving and more importantly did I make the right choice is this remote lifestyle really one where I can stay connected to people and I think yes all of those factors are so important and nothing a company ever wants to overlook so I really want to talk about how seriously TopTal takes that and what we've built to make sure that every experience is meaningful for a new hire and that from day one they are just diving in and getting acclimated to our culture our expectations um, and getting the resources and information they need to really ramp up quickly and love their role and be successful in their role. So starting with observations, I joined TopTal in 2016 in February, so coming up on the one-year mark, and at that time, people operations didn't exist. So this need was bubbling up as managers were tackling onboarding on their own. Um, there were different approaches. Some were really great. Some were still being built out. Because we're scaling, we were hiring, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 people a month, and there was a consistency factor that was becoming a challenge, as well as just the quality control. You know, is everyone getting the information they need? So some of the challenges in being a quickly scaling, sort of hyper growth, remote technology company, the first one was just time zones. Uh, TopTal represents every single time zone out there. And I don't think that's a big challenge so much as it is just a mentality shift. You need people that are flexible and recognize that work hours vary for people who travel and live in different geographic locations. And so I started out leading onboarding sessions, whether it was Monday when the US worker day starts, whether it was Sunday night when our Philippines new hires were joining, whether it's 6 a.m. to address you know, our Eastern European workforce. Um, that flexibility in time zones, I think is really important to engaging your new hires and meeting them you know, on, on their level and the times that are convenient for them to work. And then a big challenge was just consistency. We have all these new hires coming on board. How do we make sure they get a baseline of information? And I'll spend a lot of time talking about what we've done to establish those consistent practices. Process goes right along with that. How do we know we're checking the boxes and accomplishing all the great things and sharing the information that's needed for every single new hire? And then really the main challenge was just starting from scratch. So my first few weeks were diving into conversations across the company, talking to team leaders, and getting their input on what are the perceived gaps on their end, what kind of hiring are they anticipating to sort of formulate where's our low-hanging fruit or our priorities. And when you start from scratch, you walk away with a ton of notes, uh, 50, 100, 1,000 ideas, and you really have to pare that down to what is the underlying framework we need to build to make onboarding scalable, meaningful, and implementable over time. So the biggest lesson learned starting out in all of this is just to iterate. Whatever size your company is, whatever industry you're specializing in, whatever kind of talent you're bringing on board, there's going to be iterations because there is no one standard way to onboard people. Even from one role to the next, there might be variations that are needed. So that flexibility and continual improvement mindset, I think, is really important um, versus a set it and forget it mindset. That's never going to be the case with onboarding. Um, and I'm sure many of us know in a remote environment, technology is always changing, teams are growing, and so you want to constantly iterate. So I want to spend the most time in today's presentation talking about the iterations. And there's four key areas where I think that has been the most important to TopTal. One is from a process standpoint. Two is the people involved in onboarding. Three are the actual programs we've put in place for various roles and levels of hires in the organization. And then four is the performance piece. So measuring the impact and making sure that everything we're doing is meaningful. Otherwise, what's the point? 
So starting out, we're going to talk about process. And this is our little logo for boot camp. We love to brand everything top towel so that it's got just a nice feel that's very consistent with how we do business, how we portray ourselves, and sort of elevates that quality and feel of our onboarding programs. So from a process standpoint, I looked at the second poll and it looks like there are a handful of HR onboarding uh, employees joining in this conference and so this may resonate with you the most, but a lot of processes start with spreadsheets and trackers and that's very much how onboarding started at TopTal, just a baseline of let's figure out who's joining and when, what team, let's get a mentor for them, let's make sure their email and accounts are set up and that they've got access, you know, in a day one meeting on their calendar so that they know when their time with TopTal officially starts. Once we got that established, we then evolved into checklists. So how are we preparing managers, you know, new hires coming, let's welcome them to the team, let's set expectations with them, you know, what's the first project you want them to engage in, and then from there, we move to Google Sites. So we are a Google-based company, and we use wikis, that, which are the Google Sites, to provide a lot of documentation. And that is where Bootcamp really um, flourished. It's sort of become our intranet. It's got the searchability for keywords. And so while we spend now about two hours with every new hire on their first day going through our boot camp site. The end goal is that they get some of the heavy hitting information on our culture, our work expectations, technologies and resources, but they now know here's the repository of information they can go back to because we know they're not going to retain everything from day one. So let's give them a place where they can access it easily, search for things very quickly and not be sorting through a variety of different documents and reference materials. Now where we're at um, in our evolution, we're building out really customized onboarding for different teams and roles. So we've started to introduce a tool called Lucidchart, which uses um, process flows to help visualize what does the onboarding experience look like. So we have a large sales organization, and in those sorts of roles, they spend a lot of time call shadowing and then doing practice or mock calls. So there's different activities and milestones that they accomplish along the way of their onboarding, and we found that Lucidchart is really great tool to visually represent here's what you're going to go through as a new hire here's sort of the path of learning that you're going to be on just to give a little more visual clarity the challenges through this evolution of process um, started with scalability so you want to create some great customized onboarding programs and you have to be able to manage all of those activities and programs as a result then it was consolidating information so you build up this great google site of resources and you have to then start to decide at what point is the information overload and focusing in on those core three to five points that your top tellers as we call them need to walk away with in onboarding the other challenge that popped up was Skype. So that was our primary communication tool and it still definitely serves a purpose in our organization. Um, but as we were having groups participate in our boot camp sessions on their first day, dropped calls, connectivity, it just seemed to crop up a lot more frequently. And so one of our lessons learned was to improve our, our technology offerings. And we now use a tool called Zoom for our boot camp sessions. It's great because you can record the sessions, share them later, sort of audit it, quality control our own onboarding presentation styles, um, but just have better connectivity with those new team members. And overall, you know, process was really paramount in us being able to consistently onboard many people on a week-to-week -week basis by getting some of this process documentation in place. The next iteration is the people aspect. So what started out as a one-person people operations team has grown, and I'll talk about those roles at the end, but we also brought in experts across the company, one to serve as mentors to new hires. We pair every single new hire with a mentor, maybe it's on their team or maybe it's a team they'll interact with, to have another go-to for questions and help foster that connectivity in a remote environment. And then we also set up meet and greets. So if someone's going to interact broadly across the organization, organization or maybe they're coming on as a leadership hire, we line them up with several key conversations in their first week or two to understand other areas of the business that impact their role so that they can start to piece together on their own how does everything at TopTel come together and we've found that, that helps them more strategically forecast and formulate what they need to do in their role and or with their new team um, that they've joined and become a part of. 
The challenges and lessons learned here are the communication aspect. So anytime you want to engage leaders or mentors in a process, you need to clearly articulate that five W's and H, the who, what, when, why, where, and how. You know, if there's rationale backing up why you're doing a certain effort, why people are meeting with the person, what they're meant to talk about or get out of the conversation, that really just helps guide those onboarding experiences and prevents it from feeling like unnecessary meetings where you just said hello to a new coworker and now you moved on with your day. We really want our conversations to be meaningful and help a person dig into what it is they need to tackle first. And so answering those questions up front helps clarify those goals in the conversations. With that just comes gaining buy-in from those leaders to participate in the process. You know, it's a lot of bandwidth ask on their part and we wanna make sure that they are willing and engaged with these new hires in their conversations. And then a pulse check. So really just reiterating the iterations piece. We want to make sure we're not fatiguing our leadership and our top tellers who are engaging with new hires. And we want to make sure that if there's further ways we can refine, you know, communicating expectations or setting up a framework and clarifying maybe the org chart before a new hire goes into these conversations with leaders, that we're doing that and we're getting that feedback and actively seeking it out so that we can constantly improve. The next iteration is on the program piece. So boot camp started out as with the goal of showcasing our culture and our expectations. We're very driven by accountability. We are all top performers and A players at TopTal, and that continually drives people to get better and to just push things forward. Um, you know, remote, sometimes people feel like maybe they can hide out and they're not as accountable, and that's absolutely not the case with TopTal, and we wanted to showcase that in boot camp. Then what we noticed is we're growing more and more and we see more people coming from traditional uh, corporate backgrounds and maybe haven't done remote yet and haven't embraced the technologies that we use, such as Slack and Skype and Zoom, um, even just the Google suite of tools. And so we've started to include technology training and navigating our basic systems and tools so that people can jump into meetings without navigating their volume setting issues or screen share questions. And now, most recently, our programs are also focused on covering what are the goals of the new hire. If they are coming into a leadership role, what are the, what's the key project they need to tackle when they're coming on board? Obviously, new roles and leadership roles come about for a reason. There's a strategy we want to pursue. There's an area of growth we want to accomplish. And so if we can articulate those goals, that really helps set the framework for onboarding and gives these new hires a milestone. At the end of week one, this is what I should have accomplished. And we try to build out goals for at least those first three weeks to really set the pace and the tone of how we operate, the speed at which we operate and you know the outcome and output that we're expecting in a certain time frame. The challenges that we've experienced there, um, we have a very strong and large engineering portion of our core team. They make up half of the organization. And so the level of technology training and guidance they need is very different than our operations or sales teams. Um, in our early stages of growth, many people filling operations roles came from an engineering background. But now that you know our core team's in the hundreds, um, there's more and more diverse backgrounds. And I myself don't don't come from an engineering background. And so we needed to think about how do we accommodate the different levels of knowledge and expertise. And what came about from that is our boot camp sessions are now segmented. If you are an engineer, developer, product manager role, we do boot camp with you in a session separate from our operations team. So we can really customize and tailor the level of overview and um, walkthroughs that might be needed for different tools. Other challenges that came with that are just proprietary tools. So we've built a lot of great internal tools and because of that we need a lot of great documentation so that people can learn them quickly. Um, we look for people that are tech savvy and can sort of self-navigate and self-teach, but there's a lot to build out there to make sure that our tools are well documented and everybody can ramp up quickly. The lessons learned there are one, definitely utilizing your subject matter experts. I'm never going to be the end all be all expert of all things top tail, every tool we use, every system that we're optimizing. And so I really leverage our leaders to coach and provide insight on key areas that I'm not, you know, maybe the expert of. So onboarding, a big part of it is just establishing those relationships with all of your leaders to make sure everyone's on the same page and we're working towards this common goal of creating really high producing new hires in a short time frame. 
The other lesson learned is just finding new tools to communicate information. So Camtasia has become a big tool for us. It's part of the TechSmith suite of tools. They offer Snagit, which does some screen capture, Jing, which does some nice image capture, and Camtasia, which is sort of their souped up version for creating tutorials, quick training overviews. Um, I found it very easy to navigate and learn within a day compared to other content authoring tools. And so that's become sort of a mainstay when we do need to navigate someone from a tool or system and create it in an on-demand versus live environment. The final iteration comes with performance. So one big thing that's unique at TopTal is our review cycles. We believe that our newcomers, which are those here in their first 90 days, they need that continual feedback to feel engaged, to make sure they are ramping up with TopTal expectations, um, and to know where they can improve because we are all really motivated people and we want that feedback. We want to push the boundaries and become even better performers. And so our employees get feedback every two weeks weeks during their first 90 days. And it's a 360 process. It's their manager, they do a self-review, it's the peers on their team, it's people they interact with across the company. And I think that's a big difference from a lot of other organizations. So some of our challenges there are just documenting that process and clearly setting the expectation of why we do it so frequently. Um, and also just coaching people on candid feedback. We're very open and transparent here. We don't want things to bubble up down the road. And so we want that feedback to be very timely and very straightforward with examples and context so that everybody can improve. Um, Camtasia was another great tool here because our performance cycles happen in another proprietary tool. We just wanted to showcase here's how you use it. Here's what feedback looks like at TopTal to get everybody on board and really um, taking advantage of that opportunity to improve. So beyond that, um, the typical onboarding program is typically over the, the first week and maybe there's a few additional weeks where they are achieving goals and working through trainings with their team. But we also created a few additional add-ons, one coming from our co-founders. So our co-founders reach out to our new hires within their first week just to welcome them further to the company. And they also do a co-founders presentation once a month where all new hires are invited to just hear their perspective on where the company is growing, our expectations at top tech, really just reiterate and bring together all the information a new hire has heard over their first month. Compliance training, we sort of pepper that in over the first 30 to 60 days because it's a part of business, but it's not the main emphasis and where we want people to focus their time in their first few days. So we sort of spread that out. And then we also send out welcome announcements to the entire company. We want all of our top tellers to know how the company is growing, what teams are expanding, and so we showcase profiles of each of our new hires to keep everyone connected. And then finally, we do quarterly updates. We want everyone to know, you know, the great things that these teams are accomplishing as they're growing and scaling and the initiatives that we're able to achieve as our team and our company gets bigger and more um, prominent in the industry. And so those are ways that we try to foster ongoing engagement, even beyond the typical onboarding um, time frame. Let me grab a drink of water here. So my final slide is just talking about how do we make that all happen. So starting out in February, I was a one-man show, so to speak. Um, and since then, we have an HR manager on our team who focuses on the um, the payroll, the benefits side, the technology setup, making sure our new hires are squared away on day one. We also have a learning and development specialist who leads the boot camp sessions, helps build out those tailored onboarding programs throughout the first week, first month experience of a new hire. And then we also have the CIA on our team, uh, which is short for Continuous Improvement Analyst. So as employees are ramping up and diving into our proprietary tools and going through training, we have sort of a quality check to make sure, are they using the tools as optimally as they could? Are there areas where they could be improving, whether it's communications or how they're navigating our systems? Because we don't want onboarding and training to end just within those first 90 days. We really want it to be a continual process. And so we've established this CIA role to provide that feedback and input on where could more training benefit our teams as we grow? How can we ensure that we're maintaining that consistency over time? 
So those are the main slides and the content I wanted to cover to just give an overview of onboarding at TopTal. There's obviously so many other aspects and um, I'm excited to sort of look at the Q&A trail to see what questions have popped up. And before we dive into that, I will say, um, if we're able to share these slides afterwards, I've got a, a link at the end. Um, we had a recent Huffington Post video go live, I think last week, called Work From Anywhere in the World. World. I think it does a great job of showing some visuals of what it means to work remote at TopTal and what we really mean when we say work from anywhere. So for those of you thinking about working remote or maybe your company's scaling and you want more insight on how does that really work at a larger level, I think the video shows a little more context as well on how we've made that achievable at TopTal. So with that, I'm going to go back to this question slide, and Daphne, if we want to open it up for q and I think that would be um, sure. great to spend the rest of our time on. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It was amazing. I loved it. It went quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes really quick. And uh, so actually, we have a lot of questions, a lot of people who voted questions. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first question. Great. The question is from Siobhan and the question is, do you ever find that new employees aren't suited for remote work and how do you identify this issue, these issues and do you have any advice for solving them? For solving them? Sure. So our recruiting team is constantly working to refine the interview process itself, whether it's, um, you know, uh, interview projects that they conduct or questions they ask to re really probe at their ability to work remote. Um, all of our interviews take place over Skype or Zoom. We don't really do phone calls since we're global and so I think that's a good first gauge on can they navigate technology, are they comfortable, are they responsive, um, but then beyond that when they join our people operations team is in communication with them through their new Gmail account, through Slack, through Skype. And so we really, I think we get a good gauge early on if there are any red flags where maybe they need a little additional coaching or very clearly set expectations on communicating remotely, getting your technology set up and navigating that early on. So the level of interaction we have in the first few weeks and prior to their start date, I think really helps uncover those issues and work through it. Um, but sometimes people will join and they just self-assess that it's not the right fit for them and I think they're able to do that because we set those really clear expectations up front. Cool and uh, good good so um, we had also another person who um, asked the question about I uh, wanted to, like um, kind of more information about something you said um, it was uh, what is compliance training? Compliance training. Oh Compliance training, yeah. Compliance, so for so us, little accent. <laughs> yeah, no, you're fine. Um, we focus on a few areas. One, confidentiality. We have a lot of proprietary processes and tools, and we want to keep it that way. It's it's created this differentiator in the marketplace for us. So we really speak to you know when you're remote, you're transferring everything digitally. You might be sitting in a cafe where your computer's visible. You're working on a variety of equipment, and we just walk through scenarios where people need to be mindful. Um, you know, enabling their two-factor authentication those various steps and measures they should be taking to be well suited to work remotely and preserve our information. Um, we also talk about the different sharing settings in Google Drive so that access and controls for different documents is in place. Um, another compliance training we lead is social engineering. So our scam artists, our phishing attempts, you know, our password security, all of those items to be mindful of, and we talk about the different scenarios where we've seen those come into play, both in email, through Skype, there's a variety of ways that hacking attempts occur, um, and so we just speak through those examples so people know how that could apply in their role to just be mindful of it. Because there's really, the onboarding, they're really feeling like they are taking charge, they really get help from everywhere. Um, so you make sure that they are comfortable in, in everything they do and make sure they're comfortable with security and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of companies, we have a, a bring your own device policy for the most part. And so I think people are used to showing up at an office if they haven't worked before. Their computer's there, everything's installed, maybe they're on a VPN network. So even working from a Google Drive where you're sharing documents versus a secured access site, there's just different nuances that people may or may not have been exposed to before. And so we want to make it very clear to them um, how we perceive security, confidentiality, all those important aspects as a remote company. Awesome. 
I have another question who's actually getting a lot of votes right now, has been going over everything else. Um, what things, it's from Brianne, um, so what things have you had to change or struggle with, I'm just going to read this first. Um, what things have you had to change or struggle with as you shifted from onboarding 10 people to hundreds of people? So I find that things like all teen welcome emails are harder when there are 20 going out per week versus two to three. Saying sure. Like, a lot of people, I don't know if you uh, understand um, the way I'm asking the question. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So two big things changed to make it more scalable. One, when I joined, start dates were very ad hoc. It was when can our great new hire join the company? That's their start date. And boot camp became quickly not feasible to have onboarding sessions almost every day of the week with start dates were happening. So that was a quick fix working with a recruiting team to just say, okay, Mondays are when our operations hires start, Tuesdays are when our engineering hires start. Maybe there's some exceptions along the way, but that helps that expectation with managers when we were going to the offer phase and let us sort of group our boot camp sessions, which was a benefit to the new hires too. They get some camaraderie, they get to interact with other people versus maybe it being more of a one-off session. Um, but then once they joined as well, that scalability and the welcome messages, um, we do it as sort of a newsletter. So every week we say, here's how the teams have grown this week, here's which teams have added a new person, and um, it's sort of a, a rundown of all the new hires. And even though our core teams in the hundreds we're still at a size where those announcements aren't overload you're not scrolling like crazy to see all the new hires but you get a sense of where the growth's happening in the company good thanks yeah um next question we also we still have time we have about six minutes left so we have a lot of time for other questions perfect um so eric is asking do you do you do team retreats and face-to-face -face meetings sometime if yes how often yeah, so that has been an evolution just in the last few months even. Um, when we were primarily engineering based, there would be different teams that would go off site and get together a lot of times in the Eastern European area. Um, but this year was really a year of leadership growth and establishing a lot of heads of departments, um, establishing new teams. And so we did have a leadership retreat in May where we all went off site for several days to just talk about what are our strategic plans and vision for the year? How does that tie into different teams so we can leverage one another and make sure we're not creating redundancies? And I think that was a great opportunity just because there were so many new faces too, that especially when you're trying to align your leadership team, there's a lot of synergy that you get just from connecting faces face-to-face -face and having that interaction. Um, but then we also still do that with our engineering teams. And at this point, since the organization is so large, we tend to do it team by team. So we've had people sort of cycle in one week at a time and maybe our VP of engineering stays there for the entire duration of a trip, but specific teams can meet together. Um, and then we've also incorporated a little bit more video interaction into some of our weekly team calls, just so you have that sense of connectivity on an ongoing basis. Okay, so you basically do a lot of, um, you have like a bigger team, team, retreat with, team retreats with everyone and also like a lot of small ones for all the like the sub team, they can work together. Yeah, we haven't established a set cadence for it, but I think um, as there's been needs where a team's grown really quickly and it would benefit them to get some face-to-face -face time, we've just sort of made those arrangements and seen a lot of success for it. So I think that will be an ongoing thing that we offer each year or maybe every other quarter. Cool. That's really cool. Um, so good. And I hope Eric has uh, his answer. Um, the next one, I have, a, I think, one time for one more. So uh, with so many people, how do you engage your entire team with things like a quarterly update, keeping everyone up to date, uh, making sure, I guess what Luke is asking here is mostly the fact that you get so many information um, from everywhere when you, everything is online and you kind of get notif notified everywhere and like updates everywhere. So how do you make sure that people are really engaged with the entire team and there's not an overload, I guess. Of yeah, so we've segmented our audiences so that we don't overload. We're actually pretty minimalistic when it comes to emails so that when emails do go out, they're more impactful and not just noise in your inbox. Most of our day-to-day -day communication does happen in Slack or Skype. So in Slack, we've got a development um, channel and a operations channel to segment, you know, announcements that are more relevant to those areas of the business. And then when there are company-wide announcements, we send it out to our entire core team through email. 
I think I'm one of the most frequent senders because it's so rare that we're sending company-wide announcements. Um, but we send those weekly updates of new hires. We send a quarterly update that just showcases, you know, what we've accomplished, a sneak preview of what's to come in the next quarter, how we've grown as a company from a revenue standpoint, from a people standpoint, from an initiatives launching standpoint. So we're very transparent with our information to our core team. Um, but then our, our CEO, for example, recorded a two-hour session talking about all the initiatives we have going on and how they're going to impact and grow the business and what teams are collaborating and working on these efforts and we shared it company-wide. Um, it's a lot of confidential information but we entrust that to all of our team members and we think that at any level of the organization you benefit from knowing what's the direction and the vision of the company and I think hearing that directly from one of the co-founders it's a morale I think too it really like boosts spirits gets people motivated boost productivity. Um, so we've done that recently and I think that's something we'll do whether it's a quarterly or an annual basis as new initiatives um, come to the forefront mm -hmm. just to keep people connected. So we have one last question we'd like to ask because there's a lot of sure. votes and we only have two minutes but it's a great question. It's uh, from Siobhan again. Um, so do you have an offboarding process? So what is the process when people are leaving the company? Sure. So when someone's leaving, it's usually for great things. They're going on to start their own business. We're very entrepreneurial. Um, and so we always want to leave on good terms. So we spend time meeting with them, our HR manager, sort of an offboarding exit interview process, understand if there's areas we could improve. You know, if they want to stay connected with us, we love getting referrals. You know, if they continue to know great talent and support TopTal. So we have sort of a standard, you know, here's some conversations we have. We email them afterwards so they can stay connected and have contact information of the people operations team. Um, offboarding is sort of our next wave where we want to build out even more engagement activities beyond a time that a person's with TopTal. But I think for now, um, it's we try and give them a really nice exit. So even if they're leaving, they're excited. They're going on to do bigger, better, exciting things. And we want to hear about that down the road and stay connected with them. Awesome. Thank you so much for um, this amazing talk and Q&A that we just did now. It was really amazing and had a lot of fun. I think everybody really enjoyed it. Good. Well, um, thanks for the great Q&A, too. Those are awesome questions. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for asking those great questions. I continue to ask great questions like that for everyone else. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off your camera and turn off mine, and then I'm going to switch to uh, introduce uh, Rodolfo for the next, next session. Perfect. Well, thanks, guys, Thank for so attending. Much. It was great talking. Thank okay. you.